everybody this is Lori welcome to my art channel if you are looking for an easy tutorial of how to create seamless pattern on Procreate then you are in the right place to make this easy for you to understand I broke the process into a few simple steps that we are going to follow begin by creating a custom canvas remember that the bigger the size the less layers you will be able to have if you pick the precise square right here from the procreate menu all you can have is 60 layers with this right here of 2048 by 2048 that gives you 60 layers so if your pattern is simple this will work but if your pattern have a lot of different elements you want to keep in separate layers until you finish arranging everything you may want to go for a smaller size so i will make one mine i'm going to go right here on this icon and i will make one of 1000 by 1000 pixels and that will give me enough more than enough layers so i will go with that also if you want to use this pattern to put it on invitations or thank you cards or something like that you can go ahead and leave the dpi on 300 but if you are planning or printing your pattern on fabric make sure you set the dpi to 150 otherwise you can just leave it at 300 for other kinds of prints the next thing to check for is the color profile make sure you set to rgb and that'll do so go ahead and create that and i have a square canvas so the second really important step before we start arranging elements for the pattern let's make sure you add a layer for the background even if you just want a white background, this step is very important. So let's go ahead and do that now. And I already have a, but Procreate already give you a first layer. So let's go ahead and add another one and name this one background. So we don't get confused. All right. And then we start adding the elements on the next layer. If you want to put a color on the background, go ahead and do that now. I'm going to go ahead and add this creamy color that I already have right here. And that's my background layer. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on the next layer. That's where I'm going to start adding all the elements. The third important step to remember is making sure you go right here on the transform tool and tap on snapping and make sure magnetics and snapping are toggled on. So now that we took care of those three important steps, let's get to the fun part, the design. So we already have a layer for the elements and that's where we're going to start. And for this tutorial, I already have pre-made the elements I'm going to use for the patterns because this is not a painting tutorial, it's a how to make a pattern. So the elements are already pre-made. So all I have to do is copy my elements to this layer and I will make sure to keep it on separate layers for now until I finish arranging my elements. So let me go ahead and do that. All right, so I am back and I have already copied my elements here. And I have those pretty watercolor flowers. And this flower right here, which is a spare flower, and I'm gonna show you later why I have a spare flower right there, but it's unselected. That means it's not showing on my on my canvas right now. So the only two layers that I have right now is the background layer and this layer with the flowers and the elements I'm using for my pattern. Very important, make sure none of your elements are too close to the edge. Spread your elements. You can go ahead and spread your elements all over the canvas um distribute the space as best the best that you can also you can like turn them upside down and sideways i chose these little orange flowers for the spaces in between to add more interest and fill those empty spots and that's actually the reason why i have this pair orange flower right there because later you will see empty spaces and i'm going to be able to filling with that little flower right there. 
now that I have all the elements where I want them, they they weren't before I have it right here. I did that off the camera. They were in separate layers, but once you have it where you want it, you can go ahead and merge that into one layer and flatten that layer if you want to. So I'm gonna go ahead and group these two layers. Make sure once more that your snapping tool is on, everything is all right. And now what you wanna do is duplicate this group four times. And the reason why you want to duplicate it four times is because you want to keep one as a backup just in case something goes wrong. So go ahead and um, duplicate that four times. Say one, two, three, and four. And the very first one, I'm going to go ahead and lock that one and unselect it because it's going to be my backup layer just in case something goes wrong over here. And I'm going to work with one layer at a time. That way I avoid confusion with the pattern. I'm going to unselect these three layers right here. And I only have one so far. I'm going to select the transform tool. And as you can see, my whole, uh, my, all my elements are selected. Oh, the whole group is selected. So you're going to tap on the middle of the screen or like around here and drag the whole layer. You're not shrinking this layer. You are moving it up to the corner. And you are gonna look for those yellow lines right there. So as you approach the corner, you should be able to see yellow vertical and horizontal guidelines. Make sure to align your selection with both vertical and horizontal yellow lines. Otherwise the pattern will have interruptions and it won't be seamless. And you will have to do it. You're, you're gonna have to do this part again. <laughs> So I'm gonna show you again with the next layer. Select the layer, transform tool, move it to this corner now, and look for the yellow vertical and horizontal line right there, and that's where you let go. Let's do repeat it again with the third group. Move it down to this corner now. Look for the guidelines. And let's do it with the last group. All right. So now that we have done that part, let's go ahead and rearrange these groups right here. Go ahead and collapse your groups and group together the layers that are similar. go ahead and delete these empty groups all right so now that I have it all the flowers the all the flower layers right there and all the background layers right there you can go ahead and flatten that group now Okay, so there you have it. Now it's time to fill the empty spaces that you have on your pattern. And I, you can use any elements you want. I'm gonna go ahead and just use my little extra backup flower that I left right here. I'm gonna bring it over here inside the group. And I'm gonna end up just um, merging that together when I'm done. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate that maybe like um, maybe like five five to seven times to fill one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Alright, and And so remember that it's very important that you don't, the new elements that you're adding to your canvas, make sure they don't touch the borders. 
maybe one more over here so now it's time to put in action our seamless pattern and see if everything works right so to check our pattern this is what we are going to do I'm gonna make merge all of those flowers and also merge them right here do the same again you're gonna duplicate this group four times so one two three and four and the first group is going to be back up so on lock and on select and now you have four layers work with one at a time so you don't create visual confusion go ahead and use the transform tool and this is very important now instead of dragging the whole layer to the corner like we did before now you are going to shrink each group until you see those guidelines. Next, same thing, repeat again. Now we are shrinking to each corner and each group should complement each other. Remember to look for those vertical and horizontal guidelines. This is the time to see your pattern in action. Now we are shrinking instead of dragging.